actually the boards of all masajid across the US, anybody who's in a position of power and authority and leadership to say, stop sticking your head in the sand. It doesn't work that way. These are issues that are part and parcel of our community, just as they are with any other community of human beings. It's a human issue, right? And so therefore, we find very solid solutions. And thank you, Shahrami, for sharing about the stories directly at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll remind us just very quickly as we wrap up, kind of in thinking about this, that the Sahaba, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, put the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a living example and embodiment of Islam literally called the walking Qur'an. How exactly do you implement the rules of Islam? He gave us a human being, a person, to show us how you do that. And then a community around him, which we call the Sahaba, right? the Sahaba and Sahabiyat, male and female, to actually commune together, to live together, to figure out what are all of the issues. And it is no exception that within all of the Sahaba and Sahabiyat, you find every single every single minor and major sin, and every single illness, and every single struggle that humans go through has actually been documented in the Sahaba and Sahabiyat. We do this strange thing sometimes as Muslims where we like put on these rose-colored glasses and we romanticize the Sahaba, and they were just these, you know, and they were, they were mountains, no doubt, every single one of them but they also had human conditions and struggles that they went through. And in those interactions with the Prophet Wasallam and with each other, we learned so much of what you do, the guide, the living guide of what Islam is meant to actually embody. We have beautiful guides, but we tend to not use them as much, right? So a lot of the work that we're doing actually is a revival. It's kind of going backward and reviving that historical understanding and putting it into modern practice.